Ruth, we've seen him and heard him previously mimic other Nazi propaganda. He previously referred to undocumented immigrants as poisoning the blood of our country. And my team and I ran a very preliminary search, and we could not find in the last several years he's been on a national stage Mr. Trump using that kind of language before. Is this a hardening and a ramping up of that language, and why do you think we're seeing that now? Yeah, so... So he is, as I said, there's a two part thing that authoritarians do. First, they change the view of violence. And Mr. Trump, since 2015, he started saying at his rallies, using his rallies and campaign events for uh, radicalizing people. And he started saying, oh, in the old days, you used to hurt people. You know, the problem is Americans don't hurt each other anymore. So now he's going into a new phase of uh, openly dehumanizing his targets. So that will lessen the taboos in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that in 2025, he's got plans for mass de deportations, mass imprisonments, and giant camps. So you need people to be uh, less sensitive about violence, either committing it themselves or tolerating it. And I see that as uh, his, uh, the reason he's using this dehumanizing rhetoric now to prepare people. If you want to be fair, if you want to be fair, then you will frame this uh, as uh, Joe Biden being the candidate that supports American democracy and Donald Trump, a candidate who supports a new form of government here that's authoritarian. It's really that simple. And by the way, Reverend Al, when people go, oh, you can't compare him he to past kidding. Nazi leaders. You can't compare him to this past Nazi leader or that past fascist leader because he hasn't done that. Well. What hasn't he done? He hasn't done the things that the American judicial system did not allow him to do last time, but may very well allow him to do this time, or a judicial system that will be ignored by Donald Trump and ran over by Donald Trump to create the greatest constitutional crisis of our lifetimes. Just because he hasn't done it yet, doesn't mean he won't do it when he gets a chance to do it. He's and if he really is well. voted into office, then a lot of these people that are talking about literal or figurative or whatever the hell they're saying, you're gonna look like idiots uh, because he will do, he will get away with, he will imprison, he will execute whoever he's allowed to imprison execute, uh, 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 drive from the country. Uh, j just look at his past. It's not really hard to read. The only, again, the only thing that stood between him and the destruction of American democracy was the federal judiciary. Texas lawmakers passed a bill that would allow local police officers without training to arrest undocumented migrants. It's a direct challenge to the federal government's authority to police the borders and would become one of the nation's strictest bills if it takes effect. This bill has many critics, including 30 former immigration judges. The ACLU is calling it, quote, one of the most radical anti-immigrant laws ever. Civil rights groups, advocacy groups call this bill anti-migrant. Civil rights organizations are warning that this could lead to racial pro profiling. Some fear it may lead to racial profiling. This could lead to racial profiling. Widespread racial profiling. Racial profiling. Racial profiling. But if they do cross the border um, and they are arrested, will they be separated from their children? Questions about the constitutionality of this legislation. There is a big concern about the safety of migrants as they are being pushed back into Mexico. What impact do you think that this will have on that state where Latinos make up 40 percent of the population? How much would this cost taxpayers in Texas? County governments are very concerned about the cost. This is causing a lot of fear in the migrant community. By the way, happy happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy Mr. birthday President. to President Biden. Yes. Uh, Many will way. take advantage of this day to talk about the one thing they think is wrong. I know, because <laughs> I will say that, that no, seriously, yeah, I mean, you, you look at how old he is, and if you remember, just look back through history, like just recent history, um, when Warren Buffett turned 81, mm. you remember everybody, they, they pulled all their money out of Berkshire Hathaway, right. no, I and think and they so. and he and he turned eighty one like a dozen, twelve years a ago. A dozen years ago, and then oh wait, I think he's had hmm? his most successful decade ever. Oh.
Okay, well, there you go. There's oh, and Donald that's Trump. That's fascinating. Okay, anyhow. Um, well, now, uh, Donald Trump's, like, he's... If Donald Trump were elected yeah. next year, well, of course, that would end democracy. But also, he would be the oldest president ever elected. Yeah. And I'm a little worried about him up there. He still doesn't know who he's running against. Yeah, he sweats a lot. If, you, you, heard you, know, him, if you heard him this weekend, Jonathan O'Meara, if you heard him this weekend, my gosh, I mean, it's not getting better. He thinks he's running against Barack Obama. Uh, he gets confused and rattled. Uh, you know, he talks about how... Joe Biden could lead us into World War II. Uh, very, very dazed and confused up there sometimes. And I'm, I'm, man, I'm worried about his age. I know you are too. We, I mean, you have to be worried about his age and the fact that he's running against a president he thinks that hasn't run for office in over a decade. <laughs> New polling from NBC News has Donald Trump ahead of President Biden by two points, 46 to 44 percent. Excuse me one second. I've got a yawn. Hold on one second. And you're yawning. I know, because there. this is a pattern. This is the end of the world, according to Democrats. According, I, let, let's pattern. just say it's it. Biden according pattern. to David Axelrod, who, by the way, mm -hmm. said Biden was toast several times in 2020. This is the end of the world, Axelrod. according to Democrats in Washington. He has uh, found a new birth for his campaign in the cases against him. As I write in the book, he, his entire campaign, and now you're really seeing it just this past week, uh, is, is a come retribution campaign. By the way, a phrase that Steve Bannon uh, used when I, in my interviews with him, said it goes back to the assassination plot that the Confederacy had against Abraham Lincoln. So this is a, this is a very dark, dark thing. We heard him refer to his opponents uh, just the other day as vermin. Uh, Adolf Hitler talk. Using, using, you know, language out of the Third Reich. Uh, he wants to eliminate and annihilate his enemies and get retribution. He tells his people that they're coming after me because their real target is you and I'm standing in the way. And for the hardcore base, uh, it's working. He's seen as a, a victim. And it, he doesn't really have a policy agenda so much as, a, as an agenda of getting revenge on his enemies and insisting on loyalty. I mean, this is really, an, he, he calls 2024 the final battle. I mean, it's really kind of apocalyptic the way he talks about it. And listen to what he says. I think that, I think that what's happened over the past year, uh, uh, you know, his campaign's almost a year old now, is people have not really actually paid much attention to, to what, what Donald says. Trump is doing and saying now. There's been endless coverage of the court cases, the legal battles, but listen to what he's saying. He is saying this is the final battle. And of course that raises questions, but what will his supporters do or think or act on if he loses? We'll find uh, out over the next year. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I asked Bannon that, and Steve Bannon I, I think is, is a very key figure in this again, I asked, Aren't you worried about violence? And he told me no, uh, because we're going to win. He is the one stoking fear. He is the one stoking violence around this country. I don't know, Claire, if it is irony or audacity that he would talk about the threat from within. Well, it's a little of both. Um, but I, I, let me even bring in uh, what I think is an, also a very dangerous thread to this conversation. Please. A lot of people have tried to draw similarities between Mussolini and Hitler and the use of the terminology like vermin and the, the, the drive that those men had towards autocracy and, and dictatorship. The difference, though, I think makes Donald Trump even more dangerous, and that is he has no philosophy he believes in. He is not trying to expand the boundaries of the United States of America. He's not trying to overcome a neighboring country like Putin is in Ukraine. He is not going for some grandiose scheme of international dominance. All he wants is to look in the mirror and see a guy who's president. All he cares about is selfish self-promotion. That's the only philosophy he has, which makes him even more dangerous because he has actually said out loud that it would be okay to terminate the Constitution to keep him in power. He said this. He actually said those words. And the irony is all of these supposed conservative folks that have populated the Republican Party all stood around and with their, with their thumb in their mouth going, well, yeah, okay, I guess so. It's, it's bizarre. And I believe that the best anti-crime tool we have is a job.
And that was New York Governor Kathy Hochul just yesterday signing the Clean Slate Law. It allows people convicted of crimes if they serve their sentence and stay out of trouble for a set period of time to have their records sealed. But there is a lot of pushback from the right here in the state of New York. I should note that the most serious cr crimes, including murder and sex crimes and most other Class A felonies, are not part of this. It was a change before this got passed. But what about Republicans who say things like, Look, attempted murder, gang assault, arson are included. Or you heard also from a New York State Senator, Dean Murray, who said the full criminal records of potential tenants will not be available to landlords. Or people who had crimes against children may be allowed to work with children again. What is your response to that criticism? You know, Poppy, that's a great question. But what I hear when I travel across the country in red states and blue states, and I talk to Republicans and liberals, they're saying that this is a public safety issue, that we have to put people back to work. People need to have access to jobs, housing, have an alternative measure of not going back to prison, reducing recidivism. They know when people have access to jobs that it reduces recidivism is a public safety measure and we get people back to work. And so I don't hear a lot of that pushback and opposition across the country. I hear people saying that this is an opportunity for us to put people back to work and help our economy. Um, it was emotional yesterday. You have, we don't usually see legislators cry <sighs> when a bill gets signed get emotional, a governor get emotional. Yeah. There is a responsibility for the workforce to say now, welcome people back into the workforce, mm -hmm. into the labor, let's, let's build our economy together. She, she to me, the work you've done is extraordinary. It's incredible. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for coming. But you've always had this fascist talk uh, coming from him. And, uh, and it, it was just a week or two ago that the Anti-Defamation League and many others were concerned when he was talking about immigrants, quote, poisoning the blood uh, of, of, of America. And of course, that's again, it's just sort of calls for racial, ra uh, racial purity. And now we're going, we're just going full on Hitler uh, yeah. talking about, uh, talking about vermin. And of course, it's so interesting. I, I, I don't know who his spokesperson is, but, I, you know, one of these fat, white, pink boys that likes to talk tough goes, oh, it's just they're triggered. They're triggered. We will crush them. <laughs> Use this. They will be crushed. Their, their lives will be crushed. And just, so you have a bunch of weak people, uh, a bunch of fat, white, pink boys, a bunch of phony populists uh, that are going around talking tough and unfortunately making threats that we those of us who love democracy, those of us who actually believe in the American experiment all these years later, have to be worried about. Yeah. And you look, you look again, you look at the language of Donald Trump, you look at what Donald Trump says he's going to do, and you go back uh, to, to Maya Angelou's uh, saying that when somebody tells you uh, who yeah. they are, believe them the first time. We have to believe him, and we also have to believe that this is the most important election probably since 1864. We try to either call him out on the lies that he puts out there or not cover uh, just frivolous stuff that he says that is lies. But in this case, you have to look. Uh, amid a rise in anti-Semitism across the United States, Donald Trump echoed the dangerous language of infamous fascist leaders. <laughs> oh, God.